masterpiece. God, kids. do you think it's human skin? It's like, let them eat mash. Terrible. Hello and welcome back to Prime Video Club. Today I bring you two pitch black comedy thrillers in the form of the much anticipated US remake of Utopia and a white knuckle ride set in the Highlands. Get juked. I'll be setting a challenge for the cast of Utopia. We'll be examining Eddie Izzard in his creepiest role yet. And joining me for all of that, it is a legendary Instagram icon. I didn't write that, they did. Manya Chihuahua. <laughs> oh, here I am, Instagram icon. How does it feel to be an Instagram oh, icon? Five likes a second is exhausting. Too much. Tired, you Gotta know what I mean? your beat. So for the people at home, mm -hmm. I would love if you could kick us off with a 10 second synopsis Ooh. of Utopia. Around the clock. So Utopia is a show about a comic book that predicts the future and it becomes a race to find it first so everyone knows what's going to happen. I, that was probably only six. Yeah, you know, I like to do things quickly, you know. Oh. All right. Let's have a wee look. Everything in Utopia is real. Viruses, biowarfare, man-made disease. They need to kill every single person who's seen Utopia. Stern's flu has now been declared a national pandemic. This is our undoing. I didn't see the UK version. I haven't so either. So it had a huge cult following. Mm -hmm. They're now remaking it for the US. And this one, I think, veers off slightly in terms of the narrative a little later in the series. Mm. And also they've maybe toned down the violence. Oh my God, you think they've toned it down? Which shocked me to hear. I that guy got his eye gouged out with a spoon yeah, in the that second was, episode. That one is a tough one to watch. I mean, hats off to the guy who, again, bit of a spoiler, he has his eye fished out with a spoon. And 10 <laughs> seconds later, he's doing cartwheels. <laughs> well, that actually brings us on to my favorite clip. Mm. So we've got this poor guy, Wilson Wilson. He's been attacked by these creepy men who we're not quite sure where they've come from, but they're yeah. evil and they want information out of him. He's mm -hmm. now missing an eye. He's fighting one of them. And we're hoping to God somebody comes and helps him. <laughs> yeah. And that's where we're at at the moment. God, it just keeps getting worse. Oh. This guy's just so creepy. Look at the, the, yeah. look at the animosity yeah. in his eyes. Look at him, he's feral. <laughs> he's feral, that's a really good word for him. Oh, someone has arrived in the background. Who's he's this? Oh. Oh. Ooh, yeah, that's not pretty. Oh, it's just axe to the head. So spoiler, this is Jessica Hyde, who is a character in the comic book, but also a real life girl. And we're about to find, he, he doesn't know that yet. Where is Utopia? I mean, okay. I like that scene. It was a good introduction for her, I think. Like for a fanboy, imagine something that you're a huge fan of and yeah. then someone walks in and says, I am that character. I'm Jessica Hyde. <laughs> Some big names in here. You've got Rain Wilson from The Office. I can raise and lower my cholesterol at will. Why would you want to raise your cholesterol? So I can lower it. And he's so different in this. You know, when we talk about this sort of, uh, the snubbed scientist who is trying to find a cure for this sort of T-shaped virus that mm -hmm. is the new illness they're battling with. You know, his character has to be quite sort of underplayed. Yeah, a hero type character in a way, I suppose. And you've got John Cusack, who's one of my favorite actors mm, of all time. You've got a lot of sort of gray area characters. Like yeah. even John Cusack, who is definitely the antagonist here, he seems it. like a nice guy. So what did you do today to earn your place in this crowded world? It's a really but he's patriarchal a figure, this yeah. sort of Jesus type character. It's just like, let them eat mash. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, he seems to be so lovely with his family. And then you get a lovely subversion of that, where in a later episode, uh, Arby, who's the uh, assassin guy, he comes back to John's house and he turns up at the window. And for a second, you get this kind of and then he lets him in and they have this sweet little heart to heart where John asks the same question of him as he does with all his kids around the dinner table. Like, what have you done to earn your place in this crowded world? Five in the seller's room, two in the buyer's room, 12 who saw Utopia so far. A 25 and one eye. We all have our reasons for being in this world. We all have our purpose. Okay, so I'm going to do a bit of a utopia myself now and make three predictions for the rest of the series. We've only watched the first couple of episodes so far. First of all, Wilson Wilson. Yeah. He's got one eye, hasn't he? Yeah. He's gone. You know, there's not enough paracetamol in the series budget for that. Second of all, 
Grant, the kid, he's going to link up with the main group and they're now going to become like a force to be reckoned with. Third of all, the short assassin, he is going to kill another member of that that inner group. These are very specific predictions. Uh, yeah, but I just feel like I've got that sense from the show. We're going to grow to like people and then they're going to be brutally killed. It's a bit Game of Thrones in that respect and I currently really love Wilson Wilson mm. and I, I don't I don't want to lose him. God bless Wilson Wilson. God, thanks. Alrighty, well joining us now, we've got the cast of Utopia and we will be quizzing them to find out how nerdy they really are. Hello, and thank you so much for joining us on Prime Video Club. Hey. First question, in which US state is Comic-Con International held? Corey. California. Yes. Yes. Correct Flying answer. star. Okay, right, next. Can you, in the next 10 seconds, list as many words as you know that mean nerd? Sasha. Dweeb, overintelligent, really into what you're really into, uh, Rain Wilson. Okay, stop, 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 stop. Um, yeah, okay, I think we're going to give it to you. I think the Rain Wilson thing is... Particularly uh, liked that one. That's pretty good. You get a yeah, bonus point for yeah. that. Terrible. All right, next question. What colour is the S on Superman's costume? Rain. Oh, the S is red. Yes. Yes, Spot it is. On. That is correct. All right, how about this? How many digits of pi can you recite from memory? Desmond. 3.14967. So two, basically. <laughs> All right, this next one is a toughie. What is Green Lantern's weakness? Sasha. Uh, like fear, like not being able to like emotionally push past like what he needs to get done. Like kind of like being vulnerable, like hating himself, kind of, you know, like self-pity. I mean, I'm sure I'm sure he feels that way also. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, the answer we were looking for was the color yellow. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us for that quiz. That was fun, actually. No, it was good. Quite glad it wasn't me on the yeah. spot because <laughs> I may not have done as well as some of those people mm. did. Speaking of difficult challenges, our next movie takes us all the way to the Highlands where four poor unfortunate teenage boys are trying desperately to get their Duke of Edinburgh award. Okay, roll call. Be careful, we don't want to get lost in the Highlands. There's danger everywhere. Hello, boys! Is that the Duke of Edinburgh? You won't get away with this. We always do. Let's finish this. You know, Hazel, when I first heard Get Duked, I thought, you know, what's this going to be? <laughs> masterpiece. <laughs> Honestly, it's a masterpiece because basically what you get is you get kind of like the slapstick humour of um, like Hot Fuzz. You get the sort of survival aspect of the Hunger Games where they're being chased mm -hmm. by these weird posh cult who basically, to to kill the population, hunt people doing the Duke of Edinburgh. The Duke right. is like the, he's a villain, but he's also kind of quite quirky and eccentric. Eddie pulls it off quite well. Um, so this is he where does. the boys first come across the Duke. We could ask him. Yo. So that's DJ Beatroot there. There he is. And there oh, he is right. just from afar. That's pretty ominous as it is. Do you know what I mean? Look Yo. at the vast, you know there's no one coming oh, to help. Is there a there's some there. really nice wide landscape shots. I mean, that's just such it's a, a creepy pose, isn't it? shot. Who's that? Hey, Paul! I mean, he's owning it. Hello, it's got that kind of Mike Myers that looks vibe a little bit with like, the yeah. Yeah. mask on. Yo! I just like oh, that, couldn't quite pull myself crazy. out of like that's Eddie Izzard. So it was that extra well, bit mad. Like this, yeah. mm. His voice is so distinct. It's not the Duke of Edinburgh. Holy it's shit. Yo! <laughs> so. And if I DJ beat me, train all white. Animals, you just give us a metal note and we can go home. For the good of the herd. I have no At this point, I would have been running. Out. Yeah, I, I did wonder why they wouldn't. At this point, I definitely would have been yeah, running. Pretty good aim. <laughs> And off they go. <laughs> but yeah, I think it's one of them films where you sort of are not terrified by the uh, the villain, but there is also something sinister. You see, we must keep the integrity of the species under control. So Eddie Izzard was an exec producer on this, mm -hmm. stars in the film. This is hands down the weirdest role I have ever seen him in. Bonkers. A, There's Eddie. He's got his flat cap on, his tweed jacket. Well, he's fully dressed as the Duke. And some form of human skin over his face. I think it's pig skin. Kid. God, do you think it's human skin? 100%. My favourite moment in the entire film mm -hmm. 
was um, one of the characters got a, a little bit high. Just see your food. The forecast says it's a cold one. So I'm... And gets a bit paranoid. And they all then start to think that their teacher uh, <laughs> is the guy with the gun who's been chasing them. Because we've never seen the two of them in the same place at the same time. Mm. So one of them takes it upon himself to, to deal with that situation. Let's have a look at that. I think killing him is a wee bit much. It's got to be stopped. Look, we need to decide on a plan fast before she knows that we know. Good, did you? That's, that's right. Train work. I'm a party to a vote. Right. I'm a strong... Maybe yes. Right. Did you? Yeah. And Dean? Aye. And Duncan? Duncan? Oh, wow. It's just the way that, oh, <laughs> the tyres stopped on his bum. Yeah. This is Duncan. What the heck, Duncan? He's trying, bless him. What the hell have you done? And Duncan. it just comes out of nowhere as and well. That's it. I actually was kind of expecting that, to, that they would queue that up from a bit earlier, but just straight in, which is fine, because that really is as out of the blue as it is. They're all just in a circle, kind of 70s show style, having a chat. And then the next thing, and let me that, tell you that something. Happens. It really did set the tone for the whole film though. As soon as that had happened, I was like, oh, okay, all bets are off. Something we haven't really talked about is the way that it's shot and directed by Ninian Duff, who was a music video director, mm -hmm. which then makes so much sense. It does, because DJ <laughs> Beatroot, who's always sort of like a, a rapper wannabe, but obviously he kind of gets shut down by his mates. And then this is one scene where he stumbles into the group of farmers and, and they absolutely <laughs> love his stuff. And he ends up creating a song about the situation they're in. And I was watching that and I was kind of like, this would make a great music video. Yeah. Four boys, three are the implication. One is sexy, well hung Asian. None of them really have hiking persuasion. Dumb struck in a role liaison. There's two, two big things from me. So first of all, when you kind of get towards the end of the film, it becomes quite quickly apparent that it is kids versus a very sort of elite portion of society. Yes. Like maybe that was actually a dig at class divides. Do you think it pulled off that message so. or not really? And it did seem to be the older generation are sort of like wrecking things for the rest of us while they sort of live the high life. It's so lovely to be out on the hunt again though. D of E is my favorite time of year. And the kids by the end of it kind of started to stand up to that. That's in shape for us. And f***ing go Vladi da. Oh, look at my house I bought after I went to uni and got a f***ing job. Why can't you, it's f***ing bullshit. It did feel like it has a kind of in-betweeners type vibe. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's very much like the in-betweeners outside of the school setting. Yeah, you know? the in-betweeners in the Highlands. There you go. That should be there the tagline. I like it. Okay, so we both posted a little tweet this week asking you if there were a horror film made about your worst school days memory, what it would be called and why. Mm. Should we take a look? Yes, let's. So, right. Amy, love it. It would be called and even quieter place. And it would just be me sat in the music room at breaks and lunches on my own, because I had no friends. That's my personal favorite. It's clever, even isn't it? Quieter. An even quieter place. It is. I it's rate that. It's a bit that. dark. It's a bit serious. It's a bit funny. Well, I think that Amy and the seven people who like the tweet should all go for Hernando's. Oh! No. No, I'm not going there. All righty. Let's, Let's take a look at the next one. Oh, wow. This is a long one. I yeah, you like do the name, I'll do the tweet. <laughs> go on. This one's from Kieran Murta. The Valentine's Day Massacre. Your mum arrives in the school playground at lunchtime with the card you left at home on purpose because you bottled it. She tracks you down, hands you the card, and says loud enough for all to hear, you forgot the card you wrote for the... Everyone dies. Pain, because you know, no. as soon as you announce that you have a crush, I, I did this, I made the mistake. Oh, when I moved no, from Zimbabwe say. to England, in Zimbabwe, you wear your heart on your sleeve. Okay. In England, you wear your heart packed in your lunchbox at the bottom. <laughs> Very darkest, much tucked away all the way Darkest corner of your bag. Yeah. So I went up to this girl, won't say her name, and I went, oh, I think you're very pretty. And within seconds, about the entire school was crowded around me, jeering me oh, for being a hopeless romantic. Been single ever since. Ever since? No, that's like... <laughs> <laughs> Aaron Kapoor says, kebab rush. Why rush someone normally? Let's throw a kebab at each other. Unfortunately, I was on the end of it. So rushing from my 
knowledge is to rob someone. So you're saying he was robbed by <laughs> being, having a kebab thrown at them first. There was important context I missed by thinking rushing meant hurrying someone. Is this a I was memory? like, at what point do you go hurry up and chuck a kebab? <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, Jemima's replied to say that's not a horror movie, that sounds delicious. She's not wrong. Oh, nice. And that's that. <laughs> a quieter place, kebab rush. They all sound like things I'd watch, especially kebab rush. Well, Monia, as ever, thank you for joining us on this fine day. Thank you for watching at home. Don't forget that Get Juked and Utopia are available this very minute on Prime. So go check them out. If you've enjoyed this video, then like it, leave a comment, subscribe, get involved in the discussion below. I've been Hazel Hayes. And I've been Miniature Hour. Join us again for Prime Video Club.